So uh, to understand the convergence rate notation, let's start from the non-stochastic cases. So uh, think about a sequence a n, and there are two different notations. One is big O and the other is small o, big O, small o. And when I say big O, a n equals big O1, then it means that the sequence does not diverge. So diverge means going to infinity or negative infinity. So it means it is not diverging. So more rough, like by the way, wh what I explained here is totally uh, like it's just just intuitive explanation and it's not rigorous enough. Just everything is rough. So please do not use this in your proof, in your answer, right? And so uh, more rigor rigorously speaking, it means that the sequence a n is bounded, bounded. But uh, uh, but I think it, you are not familiar with the concept boundedness. So in that case, uh, maybe this is enough. Does not diverge. And small o means that a sequence converges to zero, right? Does not diverge. Clearly, does not diverge is different from converging to zero. So for example, if a sequence converges to one, then it does not diverge, but so it is that sequence equals to big O one, but it does not converge to zero. So it is not small O one. So uh, you have to tell the difference. And another example, if you think about a sequence one over square root n, then obviously the sequence is sequence does not diverge and also converges to zero. So it is both big O and small o. And also if you multiply square root of n minus one, so multiply another number, then uh, then we know that if you multiply square root, square root of n minus one here, then that will be uh, that will that will converge to one. This will converge to one, so it equals to big O, but it's not small O. And extending this notation, uh, I chose one here. The starting point is one, but uh, like think about the ratio, relative convergence rate. So a and for two sequences, a n and b n, suppose that a n over b n converges to zero. So it equals to small o one. And then you may rewrite a, a n as b n times small o one. And simply, you can simplify this notation by putting b n inside small o. So when I, when I say a n equals small o b n, that you may divide both sides by b n and have this. And its meaning is that a n converges to zero faster than b n. So a n converges to zero, b n converges to zero, but uh, a n is converging to zero faster. That's, that's the meaning, uh, meaning of the, uh, this one. Ah, uh, by the way, it's just, uh, so, or alternatively, this also means that if a n goes to infinity and b n goes to infinity, and this means that uh, b n diverges faster than a n, or a n converges to zero faster than b n. So they are the same thing. And similarly, you may consider big O and uh, a, if a n equals to big O b n, then it implies that a n over b n is not diverging. So uh, so it means that a n does not diverge faster than b n. A may be diverging, but it does not diverge faster than b n. And b n may, may converge to zero, but it's slower than a n, right? So it's a relative, like who is faster, who is um, uh, who is faster? It's about who is faster going to zero. And uh, and you may extend this same idea, same idea to stochastic sequences. So so like uh, think about a sequence of random variables. I'll give you an example later, but just in here, x n is a so for each n, x n is a random variable. Like you can think about uh, you can think about like binomial distribution which depends on n or say chi-square distribution, t-distribution, uh, f-distribution. 
uh, those variables depend on n, which is literally the sample size, and then uh, that they are good examples to understand what happened here. Uh, so, so when I say xn, uh, random sequence xn is big O p1, it means that xn does not diverge. Uh, and xn is uh, small o p1 means xn converges in probability to zero, right? Parallel to exactly the same as non-stochastic cases, and uh, big o, the relative order can be written in the same way. Say now, now by the way, xn is uh, random, but in this case I use a uh, constant an, non-stochastic an. But you may consider a random number too, but it does not matter. So and you now it means that xn is big O p a n, which means that xn does not diverge faster than a n. And uh, this way you can think that xn converges to zero faster than a n, or if a n diverges, xn diverges slower than a n. Uh, a simpler way to understand this meaning. So then, what? So many students don't understand the difference between uh, randomness, stochastic sequence, and non-stochastic sequences. Simply speaking, in this case, it is a random variable. So every time it could be different. Every time it could be different. Like if you re, like a uh, resample, or if you try the experiment again, the value could be different. But like 1 over square root n does not change. Every time there is n so as as long as, as as long as n is fixed, there is no randomness. Uh, n is not random, n is just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it is increasing by 1. So it is not random. Nothing is random here. But if you have difficulties uh, understanding the random sequence, then alternatively you can think so first, you have to understand whether it is random or not. Uh, it's there's no easier way to tell uh, whether it is random or not. You should tell from the context, and when it is random, then think about uh, the sequence of its expectations and its standard deviations. Though it is not a rigorous uh, rigorous way to argue, but you may. You may you may uh, assume that you may imagine that, like if the mean is small o a n and standard deviation is, is also small o a n, then the random sequence satisfies small o p a n. As I said, it is not rigorous, so the um, like mean squared error as convergence implies probability convergence, but not the other way. So it is not uh, rigorous, but this is just one possible way to understand stochastic convergence, stochastic order, right? The mean and variance increases, diverges, or converges to zero at a certain order. So we are looking at uh, looking at those orders. So x itself can be different. Um, can so um, that's just one possible way to understand. And why do, by the way, then why do we use it? Everyone knows how to calculate the limit and uh, deriving the limit. If you can derive the limit, you don't need this. You don't need to know this, but it's uh, the notation is more for notation. So this notation is to simplify the notation. So let's think about this example. You want to show that you know that everyone knows that n squared plus n divided by n squared converges to one. You'd like to show that then the formal proof is like uh, you can divide this sequence into 1 plus 1 over n and then you have to say that 1 over n converges to 0 so it converges to 0 then in the end it will be 1 uh, converging to 1 right so this is what you want to say but it is too obvious, then you may simplify like this. So replace 1 over n to small o1. And then uh, you don't need to uh, you don't need you don't need two sequences uh, two sentences. So 
this is simple example. So you, it, the difference is only about this differ this much, but uh, when the proof becomes more complicated, uh, the small o big o notation can save like pages or uh, like a few paragraphs. So that's why we are using that, and and that's why like so many proofs are based on this notation. So you need to understand uh, what they mean. And similarly, like for example, you may think about uh, this case. Suppose that a random sequence x n converges in probability to x, y n converges in probability to y, z n converges in probability to a constant one, and you want to show that x n plus y n times z n converges in probability to x plus y, and then. A simple way to argue this is, say, xn plus yn zn is, say, first xn is x plus op1, because the difference between xn and x converges to zero in probability. You can put the difference as small op1. And also yn is y plus small op1. So the difference between yn and y converges to zero in probability. So that's small op1. And z is uh, 1 plus small op1. And just like use small op1 as uh, another, another term. So multiply y to 1 and y to small op1. Small op1 to 1, small op1 to small op1. And then everything else becomes small op1. So, so uh, in the end, it, 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 it is what you wanted to prove. So the original sequence converges to x plus y uh, uh, equals x plus y plus something converging to zero. So it is this. That's how we prove that. So it's purely just notational. And the the underlying theory, like simple result we used here, is that so think about suppose that two terms are converging to zero. Even if you sum those two terms converging to zero, the sum still converges to zero. So op1 plus op1 is op1. And also the first term does not diverge. The second term does not diverge. Then obviously their sum does not diverge. And if you add something, first term converges to zero, uh, the second term does not diverge. But I'm not so sure if it converges to zero or not. But then, then what you can say here is, then you don't know whether their sum converges to zero or not. But what you know is that the sum does not diverge. So it is big OP1. And the first term converges to zero. Second term does not diverge. Then their multiplication will converge to zero. So zero times something will be zero in the limit. So their multiplication will converge to zero. So small OP1. And uh, 1 plus small op1 inverse will be big op1. So uh, denominate, uh, it, it is, if you think about a number, it will be simple. 1 plus 1 over n inverse will be uh, just a finite number converging to 1. Okay, I will uh, stop here and next, in the next video, we will talk about the important theories, theorems. See you later.